Prologue Almina Key, Tripoli, Modern Day Lebanon, 1876 George Godspeed looked out across the inky surface of the Mediterranean. Today, of all days, the usually flat sea churned and broiled. A mammoth wave slammed into the quay, shaking the ground beneath him, and flinging spray into the air like venom from a viper. He muttered to himself, questioning why the storm had to come today. He shuffled from foot to foot in a vain attempt to stay warm. He narrowed his eyes to slits and examined the dark water. Other than the occasional flicker of a white-crested wave in the scant moonlight, the darkness was absolute. Another stream of barbed, salty water slapped across his face. For a moment, Godspeed wondered whether they would even be able to sail in weather like this. He shook the thought from his mind. These men were as hard as the weather herself. They had lived their entire lives on the sea, he supposed. Plus, he had communicated the urgency of his mission. Come hell or high water, he and his precious cargo needed to leave these shores tonight. The Almighty had certainly delivered on the latter of those, George thought, as another fist of spray slammed into his cheek. George pulled his ill-fitting coat even more tightly around him. He doubled it up across his chest and used the thick piece of rope to secure it closed. He had been forced to buy the ragged garment from the hotelier, in whose care he had been staying for the last two weeks. Unable to leave the hotel, his shopping options were limited. So, when the man dug the old moth-eaten thing from a dusty box, George had no option but to accept it. He thought about the fistful of notes he had exchanged for the garment. It wasn't worth one-tenth of that, really. But he needed it. He had a long crossing ahead of him first across the Mediterranean, and then the Atlantic. The crossing would take anywhere upwards of two weeks. If tonight's weather was anything to go by, every bit of warmth would be essential. Again, George squinted out to sea. Breakers the size and colour of wild horses rushed towards him and flung themselves against the harbour arm. Was that some other movement out there amid the waves? The hull of a ship, maybe. At this distance, George couldn't be sure. He turned and looked around the dockyard. Further along the dock, two large iron-hulled freighters sat at anchor. Even in the protected waters of the harbour, they rose and fell on each swell, tugging at their shackles as though attempting to break free. The nearest one, a vessel of some fifty feet in length, sat low and heavy in the water, Perhaps she was fully laden and ready to go, just waiting for a break in the weather. Waiting was a luxury George wished he had. Several buildings reared up like cliffs somewhere behind him. Packing facilities, he assumed. This port was one of the country's arterial routes, exporting produce grown in Lebanon's fertile soil all over the Mediterranean. A gas lamp on the back of the nearest building flickered under a fresh attack from the wind. The lamp's inept flame shrunk in size, retracting the island of light to little more than a puddle. You wouldn't get that problem with electric lights, George pondered, turning back toward the great black expanse of the water. If it isn't the dead man walking. A voice echoed from somewhere behind him barely a whisper against Poseidon's roar. George whipped around, searching for movement. His heart beat at twice its normal pace. It's all right, old boy, came the voice again. Don't worry, it's only me. I'm the one who should look like I've seen a ghost. Rassam. George breathed a sigh of relief. His friend's lithe figure moved through the gloom. George had always thought there was something feline about the man. He moved as though in a state of constant relaxation. That's right. Who else would it be? Nobody knows you're here. Rassam materialised and stood beside George. How are you holding up? Rassam's Persian accent purred deep and smooth. 
Well, you know, it's not been easy, but needs must, George said, scrutinising the man beside him. Rassam was impeccably dressed as usual. His long, camel-coloured coat whipped around his ankles, alternately exposing and hiding a pair of hand-made tan leather boots. The son of a wealthy statesman, Rassam lived life governed by his own agenda, rather than the simple need of money. Godspeed was well aware that without Rassam's funding, many of their more eccentric expeditions would never have been possible. Where are the documents? George hissed in a moment of panic. You said you would bring them. Relax, brother. Rassam smiled at Godspeed. They are waiting in the carriage. My men will bring them to us when the ship arrives. We don't want them out here getting soaked through. In fact, look, I think that's her now. Rassam pointed out into the void. Squinting hard, Godspeed could just about make out a shape slipping through the waves on the other side of the harbour arm. A dull lamp mounted on the bridge offered a pinprick of light by which to recognise the vessel. Rassam produced an oil lamp from beneath his coat and set about lighting it. He dug out a box of matches and struck one to life. He turned on the gas and slid the burning match inside. The lamp flickered as though deciding whether to obey, then rose into a steady orange glow. In the light, Godspeed recognised the box of matches. Brighton Seafront in colourful oils was printed on the front. The image seemed incongruous on the stormy shores of the Mediterranean. How many of those have you got? Godspeed asked. They were far from an ordinary box of matches. Godspeed knew. Several. Rassam answered, his voice laced with amusement. Rassam held the box out towards his friend. You have this one. A memento. Besides, you never know when you might need it. Godspeed accepted the box of matches and then looked up at his friend. A sudden wave of finality broke across him. This is it, isn't it? We will never see each other again. Not in this life, no, Rassam said. Neither man uttered a word for several seconds. The wind howled around them and the sea churned and dragged. She's in the harbour. Look. Rassam pointed with the lamp. The ship slid inside the protective harbour wall. The thud of her engines thronged through the turbulent air. Rassam gestured into the darkness. Two men appeared, struggling under the weight of a trunk. They half dragged, half carried the case along the dock. By the time they reached Godspeed and Rassam, they were out of breath. The men placed the trunk by their master's feet and slunk back into the shadows. The pounding of the ship's engine grew louder now. Godspeed looked up at the vessel. She was about sixty feet in length and sat high in the water. A pair of stocky funnels coughed out clouds of black smoke. She'll be fine out in this, Rassam said, looking up at the ship. I bet she's beaten many worse storms than tonight's. Godspeed nodded wordlessly. The engine sunk into its lowest register with a series of slow movements. The skipper brought the ship alongside. A hatch on the side of the ship swung open and two men jumped out, quickly lashing the ship in position. The engine continued to rumble and hiss far beneath them. How long will it take you to make sense of this? Rassam said, looking down at the trunk. Two years, maybe three? Godspeed replied. Rassam beckoned for his men. They emerged from the gloom and carried the trunk up onto the ship. And the original tablets? Godspeed asked. They'll be moved soon. I know where they're going and I've got the rest of my life to figure out how to get them there. Godspeed nodded. This is it then. I'll see you. In the next life. Rassam interrupted. The men merged into a hug. Inshallah. If God wills it. A lump forming in his throat, Godspeed hurried up the gangplank. Beneath his feet, the engine that would take him halfway around the world rumbled hungrily. The sailors unleashed the ship from her bindings and hurried back inside. The engine roared, sending power to the twin propellers, which churned the harbour waters anew. 
Godspeed bustled up a set of metal stairs and out onto the deck. He looked down at the docks, but his friend had already disappeared. In the next life it is, Godspeed whispered, his voice lost between the howling wind and the pounding engines. <laughs>